My job as a photographer and as a photojournalist is to try to bring the brutality of war back home to a reader in a way that they can enter. I don't want them to look at a picture and say, oh, that's horrible, and turn the page. I want them to stop. I want them to say, wow, what's happening? Oh, it's a mother and her child. All these small moments can add up and they sit in people's minds. If you make them not beautiful enough, but if you make them accessible enough. My name is Lindsay Dario and I'm a photojournalist. I think that we have a responsibility as human beings to, to care about how other people live, especially when they live with great injustices and they do not have the luxuries we have here in America, where I am a woman, I am born, it is a given. I will have a house, a roof over my head, I will have running water, electricity, education. I can decide what I want to do for a living. That is astonishing because for most women in the world, they will never ever have one of those things. I can't take that for granted. So many women are casualties of their birthplace. They have nothing when they were born and would have nothing when they died. They survived off the land and through their dedication to their families, their children. I started covering uh, the war in Congo in 2006. I was able to spend two weeks, literally, every single day, uh, meeting with, interviewing, and photographing women, rape victims. It was incredible to me because not only were they brave to go on camera and to talk about what had happened to them, but a lot of them were, you know, they, they took a stand and they said, Yes, take my picture because I want to try and help other women and I want to try to give this strength to other women to come forward and to not feel like they're victims. It was very clear to me that no matter what hand you're dealt in a lot of these places, you have to get on with it and you just have to move on. And so that I used a lot in my own experiences. So for example, in Libya, and I remember very distinctly in Libya being tied up, blindfolded, and punched in the face. And I remember there was a moment where I just sat there and I was like, shit, and I just started crying. And then I thought, you know, pull yourself together. I mean, you could handle this. This is like, it, 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 it's a lot worse for a lot of other women. And so I used their stories as a source of strength. Yes, I would definitely say I'm still optimistic about humanity. It's pretty easy to get overwhelmed uh, by everything we see in the news and all the killing and death, and, but war has been around since the beginning of time. I mean, we've always been a war. If anything, I've taken with me the optimism that I see in people in those war zones. And I think it's very important to do that and, and to listen to them and to look at them if they live 24 hours a day under bombardment and they still have hope that one day the war will end. How can I as an outsider say, you know what, we're never going to have peace. You know, I just don't think it's fair. That's not my job. My job is to take that optimism and bring it out there.